When did you know you wanted to make it a career? 13, 14, I think. That's when I realized that that's all I want to do. that it was real tonight? Um, you know, I was always going to dream. So I'm just going to have to win the game. So this back in. Kimmy, first career win, and you get the hat, bro. Oh, I honestly couldn't have couldn't done this without you guys, so thank you. Any, any piece of advice that you have for uh, maybe a young kid growing up? Uh, work hard and still have fun, of course. Welcome back, everyone, to Monsters OT, presented by University Hospital Sports Medicine here on Bally Sports Great Lakes. I'm Tony Brown. We thought there was no other place we could begin our second season on the air than remembering the one and only Matisse Kivlenix, who passed early in July as the result of a tragic accident. Matisse was beloved by his teammates, by all of us that work for the Monsters, but most importantly, by the fans here in Cleveland, on whom he left an indelible impression in his four seasons with the Cleveland Monsters. We send our deepest and most heartfelt condolences to his family and to all those who knew him. Uh, he was a bright, shining, positive light in this hockey business. And later in the show, in our Monsters Memories segment, we'll take a look at his impact on the Cleveland Monsters and uh, everything that he achieved in his hockey career. All that said, we are so excited to be back on the air here on Bally Sports Great Lakes for the second season of Monsters OT, and we have a lot of ground to cover on our debut episode. Coming up in our headline segment, we'll take a close look at the Monsters 2021-2022 regular season schedule that's been released, as well as the AHL's new playoff format, and we'll run down what players have been signed to AHL contracts to play for the Monsters next year. Also, later in the show, we'll take a look at uh, a pretty cool promotion coming up this year for the Monsters. Our old buddy Ryan Kupta is teaming up with a Cleveland culinary legend for a really, really cool event at the Monsters game on December the 4th. That, plus another look back at Matisse Kiblenik's fabulous contributions to Cleveland hockey in our Monsters Memories segment. With all that coming up on the show, time to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Monsters OT presented by University Hospital Sports Medicine only here on Valley Sports Great Lakes. At University Hospitals, our sports medicine experts bring science and compassion together to develop personalized care plans for athletes at every level, from peewee to pro. The same experts who care for the Cleveland Browns, the Cleveland Monsters, and the Cleveland Ballet keep our local athletes performing at their best. Schedule an appointment at uhsports.org. University Hospitals, the science of health, the art of compassion. Protecting yourself, your loved ones, and your community is more important than ever. And with immunizations at Discount Drug Mart, they're as quick and easy as one, two, three. Step one, fill out a short, simple form. You can even do it online. Step two, stop in and see your friendly pharmacist at your neighborhood Drug Mart pharmacy for flu, shingles, and many other vaccines. You can be in and out quickly and safely. Step three, you're out the door and heading back home. Simple as that. Discount Drug Mart is your immunization destination. Musselman's Family Farmers make our applesauce easy to eat and even easier to love. Unlike this sugar-loaded lollipop. Oh, uh, excuse me, little help here. Musselman's, handpicked from our family farms. Well, hey, Monsters fans, Tony Brown here with you, checking in from the Monsters and Charges back to school bash. We're here at Halloran Park in Cleveland, where Monsters and Charge staffers have stuffed 200 of these backpacks with school supplies for local kids. Let's take a closer look at this great event. 
We love working with Halloran Park anytime we can, and to be able to involve the Cleveland Charge now is uh, just a really awesome opportunity for us to introduce their brand to uh, a lot of new fans and get to uh, some kids to play hockey for the very first time. We were able to send uh, 200 kids home with uh, school supplies. For a lot of them, it's their first time in a long time being back in person, and so we're excited to celebrate the occasion with those kids. Yeah, so we have a bit of an open house for the uh, Monsters Learning and Recreation Center. We encourage people to come check it out. It's a public facility. You can come check it out anytime you'd like. Uh, and then we also had some basketball and hockey instruction. So a little bit of everything, and of course, uh, Swoley and, and Pazzi here as well. We're really excited to have Immaculate Cleaning on board. And one thing from the beginning of our partnership we've learned is just how, how dedicated they are to things like this and, and helping kids and getting back to school. And so they're, they're going to be great partners in the community. And we're looking forward to uh, seeing where this, uh, this goes with Immaculate Cleaning. Monsters and Charge always active in the community throughout the summer, right? So can you give us a little bit of a broad strokes idea of where fans can find these two teams uh, in the community this summer? You can follow us on social media. You can go to clevelandmonsters.com slash community. Uh, head to clevelandcharge.com, and we'll be able to get you any information uh, so you can come out and enjoy events like these. And, uh, you know, we're active all summer. There's no off season for us. Well, another fantastic event today for the Monsters and Charge at the Back to School Bash here at Halloran Park. Huge thank yous to hand out, of course, to all the staff members who made this event what it was today, to all the kids who came out and enjoyed some really fun times here at a great facility, and of course, thanks to Halloran Park and our friends at Immaculate Cleaning for making today possible. If you want to learn more about how the Monsters and Charge are impacting their communities, visit us online at clevelandmonsters.com. Okay, three big topics to cover in headlines this time around, and we're going to start by breaking down the Monsters 2021-22 regular season schedule as it is released, and you can check it out right now at clevelandmonsters.com. Going to be a 76-game schedule with 14 different opponents for the Monsters this year, opponents uh, from the North Division, where the Monsters will reside this season after their temporary reassignment to the Central Division last year. Also, a bunch of classic Central Division opponents for the Monsters this year and a handful of teams coming out of the Atlantic Division too. So a nicely varied schedule this season. Here's how it breaks down in terms of opponents. The following teams uh, will play the Monsters a total of four times this year, so twice at home and twice on the road. That's Belleville, Chicago, Charlotte, Hershey, Laval, Lehigh Valley, Milwaukee, Rockford, and the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. Now, uh, only one team on the Monsters schedule this season will play the Monsters six times, and that's the Toronto Marlies. The following three teams, Grand Rapids, Syracuse, and Utica, will compete against the Monsters on eight different occasions, so four home games against each of those opponents for the Monsters this year. And finally, uh, the Monsters certainly going to get uh, a little bit of mileage under their tires heading to Rochester, New York this year. They will play the Amherst a grand total of 10 times this season, five times here in Cleveland, and five times at Blue Cross Arena. So that is how the regular season schedule sort of lays out for the Monsters in the coming year. Let's take a look now at the new playoff format for the American Hockey League this season, and I think this is really interesting as uh, you want more teams to make the playoffs if the focus of your league is player development because playing in those meaningful games is great for developing those players, as we know, uh, here in the American Hockey League. So here's how it shakes out. 23 teams out of the league will make the playoffs this year, and uh, basically, out of each division, uh, the bottom two teams in the standings will not qualify for the playoffs. So the Monsters have seven teams in the North Division. That means that all but two of those seven teams, five of them, will qualify for the Calder Cup playoffs. And if you're in the top three in the North Division this year, you will get a first round bye. So a lot to play for and a lot of interesting uh, uh, sort of plates moving around to see who's gonna slot in where come the start of the Calder Cup playoffs. The first round, is, the, is a best of three series, I beg your pardon, leading into the second and third rounds of the playoffs, which are the division semifinals and division finals. Those are each best of five game series. Then you move on to seven game series in the conference finals, which will be uh, contended between each division champion in the Eastern Conference and Western Conference respectively. And of course, the best of seven game Calder Cup Finals. So five rounds in the playoffs this year and more teams getting in. I think it's great for the goal of the league and that is developing these young hockey players.
Finally, on headlines, we're going to take a look at which players are under contract for the Monsters this season. Now, we all know about the taxi squad, right? That was a big topic of discussion last year. Well, thankfully, that's not a thing anymore, and uh, the Monsters will certainly see tons of players that are on NHL contracts with the Blue Jackets wear a Monsters uniform this year. But right now, we're only going to talk about the players who are playing on AHL deals. We'll go by position and take a look at the forwards first. Seven forwards under contract with the Monsters as of right now for 21-22, including some familiar faces like Justin Scott, who is only a few games away from the Monsters' all-time games played record. Also, Brett Gallant, a uh, fan favorite, certainly is back. Uh, some new faces, too. Cole Castles has signed an AHL deal. Um, Tristan Mullen, Jake Gaudet, and Cole Fonstad are all players who saw a little bit of time for the Monsters last year towards the end of the year. And Adam Haluka, who was a very valuable utility piece for the Monsters last season, he will be back on an AHL contract for Cleveland this coming year. Let's take a look now at the defenseman under AHL contract for this coming season. Dylan Simpson, that is a huge, huge uh, player to have in the lineup for the Monsters. Thomas Shemich is back. He really endeared himself to Monster fans last year. Also, Olivier LeBlanc, Billy Sweezy, who played 20-plus games for Wilkes-Barre Scranton last year, but still is technically a rookie, uh, and Cole Clayton. Another rookie, all signed to AHL deals for the Monsters. And in the goal crease, there is only one player that is under AHL contract, and that is Jet Greaves, who signed a two-year American Hockey League agreement with the Monsters earlier in the offseason. He has been playing for the Barry Colts of the OHL the last couple of years. So there you have it. Those are your AHL contracts for the Monsters, and that's it for headlines here on Monsters OT. We'll take a quick break, but we've got plenty more ahead, including our Monsters Memories segment and some details on a really cool promotion coming up later in this season for the Monsters. Stay tuned, it's Monsters OT. We're presented by University Hospital Sports Medicine. You can only find us here on Bally Sports Great Lakes. On December 4th, the Monsters are celebrating National Cookie Day here at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse with specialty jerseys and a pretty sweet collaboration between our very own cookie monster, Ryan Kupta, and Cleveland culinary icon, Michael Simon. The guys recently met up to get to know one another and discuss what's sure to be a pretty tasty night here at the Fieldhouse. Where'd you, where'd you grow up? Uh, Broadway Heights. Broadway Heights. Yeah. See, I grew up in... Well, Cleveland Heights and then North Olmsted, which when I was young, they were big hockey cities. I wrestled like a, like a <laughs> terrible skater. I found out later in life that in wrestling, all I needed was a pair of sneakers and shorts. And in hockey, I needed skates, sticks, and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So my dad basically just put me in the cheapest sport. <laughs> so. so tell me about hockey. Um, I'm going to try out for Medina. Okay. I haven't played in like two and a half years, but I just started skating again. Okay. You're feeling good? Yeah. Is hot like you said you're you made the freshman golf team, but is hockey your favorite sport? Yeah. You like hockey mm -hmm. the best. Mm -hmm. What oh yeah, what position do you play in hockey? Goalie. Goalie, alright, well that makes sense. <laughs> oh, you know what I have that I got I'm gonna bring this for you. I who's the goalie of the New York Rangers? Uh Henrik Lundqvist. He's really good, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's one of the best goalies, right? Yeah. He's a nice I had guy. A big sticker of the wall, I mean. Oh, on dude. my wallet. So I used to be on a show on ABC called The Chew, and we played this stupid game that if I could, they gave me a hockey stick and a biscuit, and he was in the net, um, and I went upper net on him and scored, and that was, the, it was a miracle. It was like my, the greatest shot of my life, but he gave me a sign, they had a Chew jersey that he signed. I'm gonna, when I come back, I'm gonna bring the jersey for you. All right. All right, mm -hmm. let me see what I got. Let me, I'm gonna work that. I'm, right. I'm gonna work, maybe we could even, who knows, let's see what we could try to get him to Cleveland. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> Part of the promotion? Coming up with a signature Ryan Cookta cookie that'll be available for purchase by fans at the game on National Cookie Night. Now if you, let's just say you could put anything you wanted on your cookie. No holds barred, what would go on it? Ooh, would, um, you go cr like, would you go crazy or would you keep it kind of simple? Crazy. Crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, throw some stuff at me. I don't know, maybe some gummy bears. Gummy bears? Uh, lots of candy or something like that. Some kind of candy? Definitely chocolate chips. Chocolate chips? M&M's. 
M oh, M and M's. Peanut or regular? Probably regular. Regular. Yeah. Almond Joy or Mounds? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, those candy bars aren't even popular anymore. <laughs> I'm showing my age. Don't tell anybody how old I am. How about Nutella? Do you like Nutella? Have you ever had Nutella? Not really. You've mm -hmm. never had Nutella? Come on, guys. <laughs> it's like chocolate hazelnut. His sister loves it. Sister loves it. <laughs> Are there any, do you like banana, like any kind of like things like that? Do you like, do you like banana? Yeah. Or do you like, okay. Like a couple cookies or like one big cookie? Probably one big one. One big cookie. Yeah. Have you ever had sea salt with your chocolate chip cookies? Chocolate chip cookies mm -hmm. with sea salt on top? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna give you a tip. We don't want anybody to know this, but salty and sweets always, it wins every time. What candy do you like? What's your favorite candy? Probably Sour Patch Kids. Oh, you're, you're into the sour. <laughs> yeah. I like, all right, this is going in a different direction now. So sugar <laughs> cookie might be where we go then, because sugar cookie would play good with it, because then we'd get the sweet and the sour. I'd have to bring in some of my culinary higher ups to figure this out. <laughs> with the foundation laid for their craveable confection, the conversation shifted to overcoming adversity, something Ryan knows a lot about. So. What advice would you have for kids going through a tough time like cancer or some other um, tough situation? You know, I, I, I lean back a lot on, I, I talked about my grandfather earlier and he was a very important part of my life. He helped raise me, very important. He used to always say tough, you know, tough times don't last, tough people do. That was like mm -hmm. his motto kind of. Um, but you know, I, I think the biggest thing is just not to give up, you know. Um, you know, there's always, I think in, in life, there's always gonna be tough uphill battles. Um, and, you know, you're obviously surrounded by people that love you. Lean on those people that love you. And, but most importantly, don't, don't give up on yourself. You know, the mind is a powerful, powerful thing. You know, and um, if you just believe for the best and keep your hopes up and your strength and a positive attitude, I think that that goes uh, a really long way with anything in life. Um, yeah. You know, so you just gotta have to kind of keep fighting, mm -hmm. keep swinging. What advice would you give them? Uh, probably just never give up. There's lots of people that'll help you out along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, people like me, uh, you know, I look up to people like you that, that keep grinding along. You know, now you're skating again, doing your mm -hmm. thing and um, you know, you're an inspiration to a lot of people. Thank you. That's why I got to make sure that this cookie comes out. <laughs> um, all right, so here's the plan. We're going to make a couple different variations of cookies. I'm going to get the cookies to you so you could taste them. Tell me which ones you'd like the best. All right. And then we'll get together again and we'll make them. Maybe sneak in a little bit of golf. All right. And then on December 4th, your cookie is going to make its debut at the Monsters game. Awesome. Are you digging it? Can't wait. I know, I like it. I'll take my notes on which ones I like best, and then, but ultimately you're going to decide which cookie you like best. Yeah. I want to make sure that you get it exactly how you want it. Awesome. All right? Mm-hmm. Deal? Yeah. All right, keep playing hockey. I'm, oh. I love that you're skating again. All right. I got to get Katie to get baking right away. <laughs> 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 Well, great stuff there from two great guys. We are so excited for National Cookie Day on December the 4th right here at the Fieldhouse. All right, time for a quick break, but up next on Monsters OT, presented by University Hospital Sports Medicine, we'll take a close look at the Monsters on ice hockey clinics and we'll have our Monsters Memories segment. All that and more coming up. This is Monsters OT on Bally Sports Great Lakes. At University Hospitals, our sports medicine experts bring science and compassion together to develop personalized care plans for athletes at every level, from peewee to pro. The same experts who care for the Cleveland Browns, the Cleveland Monsters, and the Cleveland Ballet keep our local athletes performing at their best. Schedule an appointment at uhsports.org. University Hospitals, the science of health, the art of compassion.
Well, hey, Monsters fans, we're here at the Monsters practice facility. That's OBM Arena in Strongsville. And today we're growing the game with the Monsters on ice hockey clinics. Jock Callender and a bunch of familiar faces are inside. So let's head on in and check it out. Oh, it's just it's just fun seeing kids get on the ice. Um, you know, these are young kids just starting to play hockey, and it brings you back to your memories. And for myself, having two kids part of the program, it's uh, you know we we look forward to it because it's just fun to interact with all the other kids. Yeah, it's great. I mean, they, they don't have to play hockey all year round, but it's getting close to uh, tryout time or, or start of their season, so it's good to get out there and have some fun and work on your skills a little bit. But uh, mo most importantly, I think having fun for these kids, especially at this age, uh, to enjoy the game and, and to hopefully learn to love it and improve at it as you go along. Your son was out today, right? Your daughter coming tomorrow. Um, just a way for them to stay sharp, sort of grow within the game? Yeah, well, they, they look forward to it, right? They see the monsters and they get to be a part of that. And they, and they know they go to the game, so they, they think they're on the team and they're trying out. So it's a, it's a lot of fun for them, meet the other kids. And, and you know, these are kids will be around for, for maybe years to come too. So which foot are you gonna use, guys? Which foot are you gonna glide on? Right foot, right? Right foot. This one right here. I mean, you got to get on the ice. You got to you got to practice skills. You can't uh, you can't just play this game without with especially the skating skills. And uh, we do a lot of the the skating stuff at the start of, the start of the day, probably 25 to 30 minutes uh, right off the bat. Just balance, skating edges, all those kind of things. That um, it's just repetition. And the more they they do it, and then and then once their skating skills come, uh, the other skills are, are a lot easier. If you can't skate, then shooting and stick handling everything is is a lot harder. Just real quick, kind of cool to have uh, guys like Brad Teese and Nathan Gerby out here too to help. Oh, yeah, <laughs> have, have Nathan Gerby uh, demonstrate instead of myself is much better. Well, a huge thank you goes out to all the Monsters staff members and also the participants and their parents for making today's on ice hockey clinics a huge success. If you want to keep up to speed with the Monsters and how they're growing the game across Northeast Ohio, make sure you visit us online at clevelandmonsters.com. Welcome back to Monsters OT, everybody, presented by University Hospital Sports Medicine here on Valley Sports Great Lakes. We are almost done with our first episode of Season 2 of Monsters OT, but it's time for Monsters Memories. And today, we thought there is only one place to close the show, and that is right where we began it, uh, remembering the great Matisse Kivlenix. Gone too soon at the age of 24, he played 85 games for the Cleveland Monsters over the course of four seasons, and he is top 10 in Monsters franchise history statistically in just about every major goaltending stat category, including wins, games played, minutes played, saves, shutouts, you name it. He made a huge impact on the game of hockey and on the fans of this great sport here in Northeast Ohio. Let's remember uh, the journey that Matisse took to get to his uh, lifelong goal of playing in the National Hockey League. He took an unconventional route, and it is remarkable what he was able to achieve in his career. Starting off in Tier 3 junior hockey in Minnesota, getting eventually to the United States Hockey League, where he was the goalie of the year, the player of the year. Thought he was going to head to college at Minnesota State. Instead, he signed with the Blue Jackets, and in his rookie season, I will never forget it, he appeared in 40-plus games straight out of juniors, playing against men at the AHL level. And for me, one thing I'll always remember about Matisse, it was a late game uh, in that first season that he had with the Monsters, late in the season, way out in California, in Stockton, California. And this is a player who had battled all year, and it was a, uh, a game in which he had a chance at a shutout, and his team stepped up in the final minutes of that third period to make sure that Kivy got that memory, got that first professional shutout, and it was a wonderful moment for a wonderful guy who made a positive impact on everyone he met in this sport, whether it be in Columbus, in Cleveland, or in any of the other places that he played. So with Monsters Memories, we remember the great Matisse Kivlenix. That's it for this week's show, Monsters OT, presented by University Hospital Sports Medicine. Big thank you to everybody out there for tuning in. We'll be back with more great Monsters hockey action throughout the year. So check your local listings here on Valley Sports Great Lakes.